we find ourselves once again gazing into the loving eyes of the Dreamcast, and that is because I've serviced yet another game I wish to review. This game I purchased but last week, and I've actually really enjoyed it. I thought it would be a cliché title, because it is part of the Resident Evil series. This is Resident Evil Code Veronica. I believe it started out as a Dreamcast exclusive, but later moved to the PlayStation 2. First look at the case, it's quite nice. Uh, they don't have the translucent side, which some of them have. Looks a lot nicer. This art, it's not that great. I mean, you've just got the main character there, and um, another character and uh, the, the title, so it's not that great, it's not that interesting, but you know, it's it's not all about the case, it's how it's played, as with many Sega Master System titles. Uh, on the back it's much the same, some art, short description, uh, you know, the decals, and as we can see from the decals it was masterfully done on the Half-Life 2 version, which was unreleased, so the, how he managed to do that I don't know. Uh, this is actually a two-disc edition, because I believe GD-ROMs that the Dreamcast use are only 1.2 gigabytes, so you probably needed a couple to play. Uh, the case is in bad condition because it's second hand. The first compartment is stuck solid, so you have to sort of do that. The disc gets stuck. Um, CD art's a lot nicer than the case art, it looks a lot better. There's disc one and disc two's just in the back here. Note, with a lot of Dreamcast cases, the spokes, I don't, I'm not sure what they're called, but the, the things in the middle that hold the disc in place do tend to break off and you find yourself with a loose disc. Disc 2 is in this compartment. Open it up and there's some more art. Uh, obviously only meant for the second part of the game because we get uh, what I think is a spoiler there and you, you have to be 15 to play this. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure as gamers you've only ever played games that are your age rating. So that that's pretty much it for the case. Uh, as for controls I will be using the controller. It plays all right with the controller. I don't. I don't think it has keyboard compatibility. But for this game, the controller is fine uh, because you have the classic third-person view on your player, which means you you can strafe around just fine with one analog stick. It's much like the view in Metal Gear Solid if you played that or the first Resident Evil. So it's not really an issue. But the controller just does just fine here. Uh, on the front of the controller, you get a little life monitor. I might be able to get some footage of that later. So as you play, you don't have to keep pausing to check how you're doing. Uh, you get your heart monitor there, and it says fine, uh, caution, or whatever like that. One thing I failed to mention in the previous review is the item that arrived in the post that allowed me to play Half-Life. This is what came in the post, the VGA switch box. Um, basically what it does is take your Dreamcast signal and convert it to uh, composite output or VGA. You have a switch on the top here to select uh, TV or PC. I'll just turn it the right way. So you, if you want to use it with your TV, you select TV or PC. Obviously nowadays most TVs have a VGA output, uh, so really the switch should have been changed. But uh, On the side you also get a headphone jack because of course uh, VGA cables do not carry audio data. So you can put your headphones on or plug it into your stereo system or something like that and play it. Uh, very nice, works really well. Um, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything else. You can get AV cables but I prefer this, you get more options. As well as on the composite side, you get a S video output, which will allow you to plug it into other televisions. I think one of my older televisions had an S video output or input rather. Uh, but for most televisions, you know, you've got your composite output, so you just plug that straight into your TV. It works really nicely. Near high definition, very crisp. Uh, it's a lot nicer than the standard RF cable. So if you have a Dreamcast and you play a lot of Dreamcast games, I, I recommend you buy this. It's very good, very useful. So without further stalling or forcing you to buy Dreamcast peripherals, let's play this game and I can tell you a bit about it. It's not bad. Have a look. So here we have the lovely Dreamcast Spiral of Life, letting you know that your Dreamcast is on and it's ready for action. This game is a legitimate GD-ROM, unlike, unlike Half-Life, so it will load up uh, a lot quicker because I don't know what, why it makes a difference, but GD-ROMs are high density CDs so they must have been burnt in a different way or something like that either way the legitimate GD-ROM games do load a lot faster so we've got some forced endorsements which we don't really care about and a cinematic introduction I don't think we really need to see that either the start screen is fairly standard much like the other Re Resident Evil titles and for the benefit of the viewers I will be doing a new game just so you can get a preview of what the game is like.
lovely black screen, very entertaining. Uh, you do get this uh, short introduction, but because of the time constraints on YouTube, I will be skipping it. This part, I, I do not like at all. I do not condone racism in in any situation, really. So, I mean, just look at her reaction to when we turn on the light and we see this uh, man of ethnic minority. I think it's incredibly racist. I don't know why they kept this in the game. How can she be scared by him? It's just wrong. So, the cinematic sequences are pretty good, pretty fluent, considering it's a Dreamcast, a console that's over 10 years old now. The faces, you know, all the detail seems to be uh, well done and in place. Uh, this man clearly uses narcotics and he's lost his high, so we've got to go and find him some more narcotics. I am, of course, lying. Those are drugs to stop him from bleeding to death. The game is basically uh, based around you trying to find your brother, Chris Redfield. Um, he may have been eaten by zombies or something. I don't know, I haven't played it all the way through yet. So, I believe this man has a knife. Again, I think that's a bit racist. I mean, sort of insinuating things about... <clears throat> I'm going to stop making comments like that, it's very inappropriate. So we'll just go straight through the door. I've always hated these door sequences, and I can see why they, they took it out of the newer games. I don't think it's it's necessary, because I'm sure you don't have to load every single area like that. Why would you have to wait that long? Those typewriters, of course, uh, from the last titles we know, you use them to save the game. Uh, the ammo system, where you pick up, or, or any item where you pick it up, it, it just stalls gameplay. And as you know, I don't like things that slow down gameplay. So that's another thing I don't like about this game. Otherwise, you know, it's 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 not my favourite Resident Evil title, but it's certainly a credit to the Dreamcast. This sequence I find particularly agonising. I don't know why she can't see to the top of stairs. She has some kind of uh, sight impairment. Or she's blind or something. So we'll just waltz up to the top. Staring at the, the stairs because she can't walk properly. Uh, nice mist, lovely rain, um, good effects used throughout. You know, you can uh, click on things and make observations. And it's a good idea to do this because when you do click on something and it's key to the story, it will give you a hint as to how to solve it. I don't think I can read the gravestones now, it's a bit insulting. So, like just there, the, the cinematic sequence with the close-up of the briefcase, you're, it, it directs you as to where to go. You're You're sure of what you have to do. Uh, this guy isn't looking so good. He's either hungover or burning to death, I can't tell. This part of the game I found a bit confusing. I mean, first off, you, you don't really have any weapons to get rid of these zombies with, so the only thing you can do is run through them and get hurt. I'm not sure any new player would, uh, you know, they'd think they've done something wrong. Why haven't they got anything to fight back with? The only thing you have is a knife and... You know, I'm, I'm not sure that's a good thing to use against a zombie. So yeah, look, I just got eaten. Partially. I don't understand why this woman can't just punch them in the face. She can kick them when they're on the ground, but she can't punch them. So here we have a uh, non-cinematic sequence. It's an in-game sort of render. Works very nicely. I'm pretty sure they've used some sort of motion capture to sync up these movements. Quite advanced for an early Dreamcast uh, release title. I'll be skipping cinematic sequences. Um, if you do play the game, you should definitely watch them. They help you out with the story. And uh, really, it, it's key to your survival. So please do watch them. The control can be awkward with the analog stick because it's it's not that sensitive and if 
if you turn a bit while running, you'll just spin around in a circle like I'm demonstrating there. So if I turn all the way to the right, you can't go right. So it's it's best to use the uh, directional pad for this, uh, as analog won't work that well. A lot of people aren't a fan of the analog uh, stick on the Dreamcast, and I think that's because it's a bit loose, not very responsive. All in all, I would give this game, say if I was rating it in an alphabetical system, it would probably have a C. Um, it's average, it's not as good as Resident Evil 2. Uh, another one of my pet hates with this game is the fact you have to press A to walk downstairs. You can't just walk downstairs, that would be too simple. So right now I'm going to show you a bit of action in the game, uh, a bit of the, you know, the blood splatter effects and stuff like that. The auto-aim system is very frustrating because... There's no skill involved. You point and click and then get eaten a bit if you're not lucky. You can shoot them in the groin when they're on the floor. That's a plus. But um, as with the previous Resident Evil titles, it is just point and shoot and you will hit them. You also have no idea how much ammo you have left and there's no in-game control for reloading. So if you want to manually reload, you have to either wait until you run out of ammo or go into the game menu, which I'll show you now and combine your bullets with the weapon, which makes no sense whatsoever. Oh god. The controls are a bit stiff, I just walked straight past the ammo I wanted to get, but um, they, they could be a lot worse. She's being eaten by zombies and she's concerned that someone didn't finish their soup. This girl has some serious issues. This is why I think games like Bioshock actually improve upon older titles, because things like this just take so long to read. You end up sitting here reading a load of text, it's, it's not enjoyable. In Bioshock you get the audio logs, and you can listen to them as you play, which is a lot better, I think. And this kind of sequence, which is about to happen right now when I take this uh, take this ammo, you can see a zombie smashing at the window. doesn't happen in the newer ones. Uh, the, the older ones, I think, are a lot scarier. The zombies may be mutilated polygon shapes, but it's just it's just lost all of its charm. So uh, I think this guy might have a nibble on my leg. He's a bit perverted. No, he's alright. Uh, this guy's probably quite drunk, so I'll put him out of his misery. Uh, I don't know what's, what the deal is with this guy. He's just been in the toilet or something. Yeah, I'm getting pretty much devoured. Yeah, take that. Shoot me in the balls. You want to get back up then? So yeah, he was just in the toilet. <laughs> But yeah, it's not a bad game. I mean, you you can tell by the, you know, the textures on the walls. They could have improved it, but it's perfectly playable. A brilliant storyline if you can uh, have, if you have the time to follow it all the way through. It's not an arcade title. If you want an arcade title similar to this, you probably want to go for Typing of the Dead on the Dreamcast or something like House of the Dead on Rail Shooter or something like that. Probably a lot better. So um, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the review. Stay tuned for the next review which will probably be an Atari game on the 2600. See you later.